Boom, we are back. This is the Omniverse Comics Guide Creator Interview. I'm gonna go on a quick tangent because this guest today is a special guest that you see on the screen. He was our number one cover comic book cover artist on the episode we did on the Cave of Solitude. And I kind of spoiled it for my partner, Dave, because he absolutely loves this gentleman's work, as do I. It is the man himself, Mike Del Mundo. Thank you for coming to the Omniverse Comics Guide. How's it going, buddy? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, man. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's been, you know what? It's been a, a tricky day at work, but it's yeah. all good because now I'm doing what I love and that's what matters, right? We go to work to do the things that we love to do. This is one of those things. And the yeah. cool thing about talking with you is that I know how much of a 90s kid you are. I don't know your exact age, but I feel like we're in the same range. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you, I think we were talking about that at the convention was like, you yeah. know how you someone could date themselves easily. You can almost pinpoint how old they exactly are based on, you know, the music that they've, they got into and the comics and mm -hmm. what, what they loved as a, as a kid. So I yeah. think we're, yeah, definitely. And I can see it. In, I can see it. In, yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So but you look pretty young, man. Like you okay, don't look well, like, yeah. What would you guess? What would you guess my age was? I don't know. You for me, I thought you were like a lot younger, like <laughs> ten years younger. Ten years, yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. I think it's because maybe I don't have kids and I read a lot of comic books. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Comics will definitely it. like keep you from like getting wrinkles and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I I gotta give credit where it's due. My mom at my age also looked pretty young, so maybe it's genetics, but. Yeah. uh I try to live as stress-free as possible and do the things I like doing, right? Yeah. That's the only only advice I could give to people. But um, yeah, back to our age bracket. We are of that, uh, I think the second golden age of hip-hop is where second we exist. Yeah, oh, shoot. Uh, I didn't right? even know there was a second golden age. I just, it, like, golden age. You know, you, you know where I, I, I learned that today, actually, because there was a, a date that both of us will appreciate, and they said that it marked the second golden age of hip-hop, which was... November 9th, 1993. Wow. Do you remember that oh, day? I don't I, remember November 9th, but 93 I, is the I pivot. learned that from you, actually, This the significance of this date. At a, at a convention, you were doing a sketch duel, I think. Yeah. And you were bringing up um, how good oh. hip-hop was during your time. And I, learned, I think I learned it from that panel. Was it the... Um... Was it the uh, Tribe and Wu-Tang release? That's, that's what right. That's what it was. And that's so crazy to think about if you're a hip-hop head. That... I didn't even know it. It was just that that came later. Yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. Oh, it's It's such a cool moment in time to think that such significant pieces of, of artistry and work and like absolutely culture changing. Like Wu-Tang yeah. Clan was culture changing globally. And they came out at the same time. So you're a kid going to the store and those... Are your choices those that yeah, that was crazy like you i remember back in the days like when i was really like like 93 maybe 92 must have been i'm just you know like missing out on albums so i'm just you're coming you're going to a candy shop full of albums that you've never seen before they might be out they might, might have been out in the night like 90 91 92 or whatever but everything is new to you yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. even think I was running to, you know, um, to HMV, you know, to uh, to get that 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 first release of like Midnight Marauders. I just I was just there, and I didn't, it was probably out for a minute. You know what mm. I mean? But um, yeah, uh, Midnight Marauders was definitely something I was <laughs> going for. Just because remember back in the days, it was like the videos got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Album, right? So you, yeah, you yeah. see like a war tour and electric relaxation, like those videos. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's what got me to like, hey, I want to go hear more of the album and stuff like that. So wow. that was cool, man. Yeah. I almost didn't get that album. Like it actually had an explicit lyric yeah, yeah. on it. And it was a no-go for your mom. Would, yeah, my mom would not. She's like nothing with explicit lyrics. It didn't, she didn't care about what that the album cover looked like. It was, right. Got that, he's like no we're not going we're not gonna buy that so i remember going into hmv grabbing the the midnight marauders album going to the back before she entered and like ripping the sticker off nice 
And then, because nice. I was like, yo, why does it does this even have like an explicit lyric sticker? Like, this tribe, man. Like, it's not, yeah, it was really not, not it's there not wasn't that much. Crazy. No, like, there wasn't like much. Dr. Dre's the Chronic or anything like that. No, right? not like Wu Tang so, like, Clan. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, <laughs> luckily, it was the sticker. You could peel it off. Nice. And um, yeah, I got my like first, uh, uh, my first listen of Tribe, man. Like, I, I tr- like Midnight Marauders and up is like, my experience with tribe and then i had to go back and like you know listen to lone theory right 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 um, so yeah midnight is is that one yeah great i mean if for people watching this is the midnight marauders album cover homage yeah. that mike did for spider-man it's one of my favorite things when i saw it on the shelf i said oh that's the perfect because some of the hip-hop variants i'm like ah I good album, wrong application. When I saw this one, I was like, perfect. It's just the perfect character for that homage of of Spider-Man. Like the way the position is. Was it was it a no-brainer for you when you got it? Or did they yeah. do this and do this? I think it like everything kind of automatically worked. Like right. um, first of all, like shout outs to like Axel Alonso, because if not for him, like I wouldn't be I wouldn't have had that cover like he just hit me up out of the blue and was just like hey we're doing like this hip hop cover variants and I was like and he's like we want you to do Midnight Marauders and I was just like how it's like how did you know like that's like my pinnacle moment of hip hop right right I don't think you ever answered but I'm like this guy must be like digging and he he kind of knew or something but yeah shout out to Axel um it's like one of like the you know most me- one of the memorable moments of like you know my marvel like career for sure is like you know who what who does that like who does like like a hip-hop comics collabo with like the best albums you know what i mean it's not just like classics you know um but yeah that album is just memories man but you also got to do another hip-hop variant right yeah i did a couple i did um the method man takao okay that was uh um blanket out red wolf cover okay and um the 36 chambers so the album that that we were talking about those two albums you actually got to do both co- covers for the hip-hop variants that's yeah, really cool that's crazy that's cool right it's just full circle man like <laughs> you know, the universe and that stuff happens sometimes i feel like it's a dream because like that's literally what I grew up with, like the nineties, the nineties, basically. Right. So all your, you know, I grew up with Will Spertaccio, Todd McFarlane, um, Jim Lee, like all the image dudes, Rob Liefeld. And then you look at, you know, Wu-Tang I, and I grew up with Wu-Tang and then Tribe and they're kind of like the same, like it's like yeah. Todd McFarlane and the RZA, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They're literally yeah. It's like the Abbott and the, the Todd <laughs> father. And they both had uh, what you call it, um, you know, they're just pinnacle in like creating like this group of guys movement and just going against the system and just killing it. And, you know, I look at, yeah, I definitely look at the image guys as, you know, the woo of, you know, comics, the comic industry, basically, which is which I mean, I yeah. yeah, I don't know if, if this is just the way the conversation happens to be going, but you bringing up the fact that Tribe and Wu-Tang were very significant on you as a, as a fan of hip hop. And then you do those variant covers for Marvel for both of those albums, yeah, you know, which is cool. But then to also the Wu-Tang clan of the comics industry in your, for you is now who you're working with. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. The full circle of it all, right? Because like you're a yeah, you're, so, you're a member yeah. of the Wu now. <laughs> the family uh, Wu Gambino. Yeah, man, like, <laughs> super blessed, super blessed. Like can't I can't ask for anything more, man. Like everything's just been amazing. Just like looking back at all the things I've been able to do. Um, yeah, working with like the Top Father, you know that that's just insane. Like even being acknowledged by him is a big deal. And uh, I got a pretty big shout out from him. And it's like, man, like all those things make me, make me like, just look, look at like where I'm at and just comics in general. And just, I like literally simply and just saying 
I love where, you know, where I'm at and like what I do, you know, that's great. It's a, uh, it's awesome, man. It's a, it's really a blessing and you get lost in it. Sometimes you gotta like, just take a step back. And because like, you know, comics is a lot of work, you know, it's a big grind. It's a lot of deadlines, stuff like that. And but you got to step back a little bit and just look at it and just be like, shoot, man. Like, and you look back at everything that you've done and it just, it's better than like all the, all the crappy jobs that you did. That you did. So yeah, it was worth uh, it. You realize that the sum yeah. of all that work, it, it was for something at the end. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. That's it's great. Amazing. How did yeah. getting, I mean, I want to, I want to go back to the beginning, but while we're talking about uh, Todd McFarlane and image, you're working on the spawn unwanted violence. I've read the first two issues. Really, really nice stuff. I, I don't know Spawn very well. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, but I checked it out on the strength of you doing the art. And I know that you're a big McFarlane fan. So it's always yeah. fun to see creators, artists, writers getting a, a chance to attack something that they really love because you mm. want to see the care that they take with it. Or sometimes they're like, they're too precious with it. Right. So it's always yeah. very interesting to me when you like a, a longtime fan gets to sink their hands into something like that. How did the collaboration with you guys come about uh i just got an email from that's it Todd and i thought it was like i thought it was a, a prank or some someone's pranking me because yeah i was just like nah this can't be right because like you know it's just like kind of a and but the email was like hey like we're interested i don't know exactly but i do remember him saying like i want to give you a call like what's your number and like then i get a call and it's like the first thing you hear is the, you know, the world famous Mike Del Mundo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, how do you respond to that? Right. It's just, it's crazy, man. Um, Todd is such a great guy. And that's how it really started. That's literally how that's it started. Awesome. You just, you know, talk for forever about a whole bunch of stuff. And um, yeah, that was, that was a good, that was a good moment. Yeah. Were you a big Spawn fan growing up? Yeah. Yeah. That's like pinnacle. You know the story I told you about Midnight Marauders and peeling yeah. the sticker off and this and that. That's right at that time. Yeah. yeah, like everything was all discovery at that time. Um, I actually like, like, like my first recollection of Todd was obviously like the Spider-Man stuff, right? Right. And, of course. Um, and then, and then just all the crazy like excitement about them leaving and doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And then checking out the wizard magazines, like I got like the, <laughs> if you look farther, far, far into those glass cases, there's like that wizard magazine, um, that like kind of feature all, like all the new titles that they are doing for image with all the, you know, the, with all the artists that was there. So like, yeah, man, that's, uh, you're part of that murderer's awesome. row now. Like you're in that, that camp. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Did he have the story already kind of planned out and he wanted and he thought you'd be the right guy for it or is this something that you also had a say in the type of story you were going to tell? I think he had his story in mind, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um and then um yeah, like yeah, he kind of already had something in mind for sure. So he just felt like you'd be the, the, the right guy to express this because it's not so far, so far and not to spoil it, but it's there's a very stoic element to spawn in this one. And you really yeah. capture that in the in incredible splash pages that have so much like detail and things to look for. But it isn't just big, huge cape action scene spawn. You know, it's not just that there's a lot to every panel is is eye popping. But it's yeah, it's um, mainly focused on the freak. I don't know if you guys, if you know the freak. Well, I know him from this story now. Yeah, and a lot of it is focused on him, which was really cool. Like, um, and then Spawn was almost kind of in the background, kind of you know weaving his his way through things. Um, but it was cool. Like, I, 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 I any kind of way to draw Spawn for me, I'm happy. Um, there's a little bit of like cape waving. I tried my best. No, you I, got it in there. You got it in there. Um, but yeah, it's it's very different from like I guess the the other stories. Um, it has a partly 
uh, uh, loosely based on reality because it has a lot of like the BLM movement that you know all this stuff that happened during that time because we we worked on it during that year like the mm. pandemic 2020 it actually came out a lot later it, it was already done um so yeah there's there's a lot that was involved in it and um yeah i just wanted to do my best on it you know you did you definitely you nailed you hit it out the park uh what do you yeah. what do you find when you so you've done a lot of supernatural characters throughout your career with weird world and um being in asgard with thor and things like that and now mm-hmm. with something like spawn is this something that you gravitate towards like you prefer kind of those otherworldly uh, options to draw or is that just something that you find yourself getting high so. for yeah i guess <laughs> so i mean i grew up with it like that's i like like the fa- the fantasy genre i like the sci-fi genre those are the things i i gravitate towards for sure um I'm not much of a Western guy. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think I've I'm, I'm much of a Western guy. I'm like, yeah, um, sci-fi. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm so sorry. When you say Western, I'm thinking more Western, like culture. Like you were more into maybe anime and manga and things like that. So, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Western, I, like I completely the, escaped me yeah, that you're yeah. talking about Westerns, like, like bang, bang. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid. <laughs> um so like the west like westerns and yes um yeah all that stuff man it's it, it kind of goes with like country music i'm not country music. <laughs> i feel but, like, uh, i feel you yeah um so yeah man like fantasy and sci-fi for sure like, what's funny for me is like if someone were to ask me what my favorite western was i would probably say mandalorian which is oh, yes. it's Maybe. not it has the western element the feel yeah. but it's like fantasy western right it's yeah, it's yeah. sci-fi western sort of thing yeah. so i'm i'm kind of in the same boat i can appreciate it but my leanings go to more towards like cosmic and you know the the lord of the rings and things like that i'd be more into that world yeah for sure like that's again that's our age range right like i grew up with the hobbit like you know reading the i mean that might be one of my only five books i've ever read right <laughs> novels so uh, lots of comics right yeah lots of comics and yeah the hobbit for sure hobbit. i don't know how they made that into three three hour movies i haven't seen any of them i That's love great. lord of the rings it's a short book i know it's, it's almost book. like they could have done a lot more with the lord of the rings movies but they, yeah. they did more with the hobbit i'm just like geez one yeah. book turned into nine hours is ridiculous a great yeah. book though i do love it highly yeah. recommend it um, how did you find your your styles changing from doing something like a Thor to now doing something more grounded? Because it was I enjoyed watching you do these scenes, a lot of street level scenes and cityscapes where I kind of got used to you being very fantastical and being able yeah. to incorporate Rainbow Bridge and Asgard yeah. and things like that. So do you have a, a way to switch it up? Or you just do what the script tells you and you know how to do it. There's a pretty big gap in between Thor and Spawn. Like, I think the only thing I worked on between that was um, this uh, Strange Academy one shot with Scotty Young. Um, okay. And uh, a one shot with uh, Jeff Lemire on uh, Immortal Hulk. And uh, like, my style, I guess, the transition ch- changed during that time okay so the huge gap i don't know when i have these big gaps i just tend to just change like i get bored of what i was doing before and then i just try something new so the one th- i guess the one new thing um would spawn which start off with strange academy and even with immortal hulk was more like you know more inked pieces whereas before i was painting and i was kind of like keeping it open and very kinetic and then now it's like um with the spawn stuff it was more just experimenting with that like blacks Mm. inks um less rendered stuff yeah it it, it's hard like i just i kind of just change i don't really think about it usually when i think about it it messes me up like you know like it just it really messes up my my artwork whenever i think about it so i just kind of naturally let things go and 
So when people ask me about how like my style changed and this and that, I don't mm-hmm. really know. just kind of. That's probably the best happens. way. Just let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Um, do you enjoy having a little bit of a, a gap between projects just to kind of like let, let go of one sort of creation that you've been in the world of and then ready to kind of accept the next thing so that the styles don't merge or blend into each other. It's more, you can see like, this was this era, this was that era of Mike. I don't really think about it. I don't, I don't consciously uh, like do it that way. It's just like, yeah, if what I, happens. If I was on Thor and with that same style and I was working on spawn with the same style. It, it's cool. That's it's what not, it is. Yeah. I'm not really trying to be like, yeah, this is my new, new style and this and that. It's just, it just happens because I do get bored. And when I get bored, I just don't like drawing anymore. Right. You know? I need something new to work on. Like if I'm working on um my sketchbook and I'm life doing life drawing, uh, a lot of times I'll, you know, I'll sketch like for two weeks, I'll be drawing people detailed, heavily detailed. And then it just like you walk, you know, the next day you're kind of like, I just not, I don't feel like drawing. So you got to figure out a way to, to get yourself motivated, motivated again. And for me, the way to do that is to, switch it up like maybe mm. i'll just switch up my materials you mm. know doing pencils i'm gonna mess with these like microns now or you know thin inks and whatnot so everything is to keep myself motivated to draw to have fun with it everything is just fun you gotta you gotta have fun and if you're not having fun you gotta figure it out you gotta switch it up right well that makes sense do you uh go to any sort of places as far as like trying to get inspiration or is it just what when you're at the table whatever comes because you know what you're doing now or is there ever a time where it's like i need just something to feed my you know my color palette or watch these type of movies to get into this zone for this type of book for sure um (laughs) funny enough um spawn was heavily influenced inspired by like the secret of nim colors okay that book so that movie the secret of them um, very interesting like my favorite might be my favorite movie but definitely my top five of movies um cool. very cool which is i think that secret of them is like inspired like a lot of things like even weird world and like thor but for some reason spawn i really wanted to get really dark with the like because secret of has like this very colorful palette but very dark and very 80s like it's washed out right so i'm like this would be perfect for spawn like just juxtaposing right like i mean i don't even know if it's juxtaposing but like taking something animated and bring it into the world of spawn so that so that the look of spawn is definitely um in the background of like secret in him for sure that's background very cool sure. and color palettes and stuff like that yeah yeah it, and you know i i find knowing these type of things sometimes it adds to the experience then when you read the book because i feel like it's like that nas line like no idea is original it's never what you do but how it's done right so you're taking something that inspired you yeah. and creating something completely brand new that one day a kid will be like you know i took this from you know unwanted violence when mike del mundo did that it's just like this nice little trickle effect sure. so it's um, cool to see it makes you appreciate the work differently. For sure. That's like another moment of like what I grew up with. So you got the, um, on the comic side, it's like the image guys. Yeah. On the hip hop side, it's like, you know, Wu and like Tribe and everyone. And then on the movie side, like animated side, it wasn't really the Disney stuff, man. It was like Land Before Time, you know, mm. Secret of Nim, uh, American Tale. It was all the Donald right. films. Okay. Like what, I gravitate towards because there was just a bit more and it was dark but it, was, it scared the hell out of me as a kid uh which like really sinks in and right then, right yeah but and the cool thing about it is like um when i was using it as inspiration um i was able to watch re-watch it with like the with my kids and see how they would like react, react to the react to it they loved it man um but yeah, like I rewatch uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> and I'm like, and you see it in a different way now. As, right, right. Well, especially you can. You can appreciate yeah, like it. Just analyzing it. Like, yeah. More, 
taking it in as a kid like i'm looking at it and seeing the palettes and seeing how like i think to, i think that like the freak is actually i took a lot of um inspiration from nicodemus from like is this, is it nicodemus from secret in him that like the old rat like the really like old wise rat with the gem um i think that was definitely um the freak was inspired by that dude especially like the fingers because like trying to figure out how uh like the freak is just like this kind of skeleton dude so i was like trying to figure out how to make his fingers that's terrifying bony. yeah and, yeah it was just confusing so like yeah he was very uncomfortable on when i was reading i, I read it digitally it that's great like yeah I, I thought i thought to me i was like it for me i just yeah like I, I didn't think it was so uncomfortable. I think that I thought that it was like, just like really stylized and stuff like that. But like, I was trying to get that uncomfortability. So if I, you know, if I managed to succeed with that, that's. that's well, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know Spawn that well. Like I know the violator, you know, but when I, when I look at this character with the colors that you, you have and the way you kind of snapshot, you got the one big shot of him in this one panel and then you yeah. break it down into three other ones where he eats something and you just see like so oh, all, yes. yeah. all his features yeah you get a real idea of like uh, like i'm not a, i'm not a big horror fan so when i see stuff that it, it scares me a little bit more so it worked on me <laughs> yeah i was like uh for sure like yeah that cockroach scene was crazy i was like actually like channeling like tyler the creator's first video <laughs> oh that's <laughs> not it yeah, well, you, you you nailed it. You got it, man. <laughs> but your art has that style. I, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you, like, how much of how much did hip hop influence your art style? Because it does have a sort of like a graffiti element to it, where you could you could, in my mind, certain prints that you have or very famous covers. I'm like, I could see someone spray painting that. Like, it feels yeah. like that. Yeah, it's definitely influenced. I mean, I grew up with hip hop. Like, I used to be boy um heavily like that was like my life for like since grade seven to you know up to college i was just is that when you started to to b-boy yeah. in grade seven yeah like just Very cool trying to figure Very it cool. out and then like i got i finally got good like probably like grade 11 grade 12 and then cool. we were just, yeah we're, that's i pretty much dropped everything and was just break dancing like or b-boying all throughout like my like i guess pinnacle would be like 19 and then and up uh, and like we were just battling crews and uh um, traveling so and battling crews and traveling and stuff like that so but yeah i mean hip hop pretty much uh took over you know like ever since like probably like yeah grade 7 when my cousin like first started exposing us to like all the music you know like mob deeps the infamous like stuff like that like all and all, all the singles he'd bring you know, like the maxi singles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we we started to like, I mean, before breaking, we were doing like we were trying to do graffiti, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know, it was me, like I, we we'd like bomb like schools and stuff like that. And uh <laughs> no, I was like, I was, it wasn't me, man. I was like, I felt like terrible. Like I was like, it's kind of I was like, you know, I'm gonna stick to like b boying because like that's mm -hmm. my thing. Um but, you're not gonna get in trouble for that. Yeah. You get you just someone's gonna want to battle you no one's gonna want to arrest you but yeah i grew up with like every everyone i grew up with is heavily involved like was heavily involved in like the hip-hop scene so like whether you like you know some of my best friends were like battle djs um b-boys and then like like you know graffiti writers like some of the top graffiti writers in toronto so yeah man yeah that's dope um i couldn't b-boy i couldn't draw to save my life so there was going to be no bombing but i tried my hand at rapping yeah. I, I love that yeah nice. me, me and my uh my best friend in high school we it was it was funny it was the day that the blueprint was supposed to come out september 11th and wow. it, didn't, it didn't come out here and we were terrified that day for obvious reasons 2011 uh 2001 september 11th so yeah, that day we I remember that time like, yeah it was supposed to come out that day. yeah yeah so we still went to yorkdale mall that's the famous mall in uh toronto for those listening but we it's bought rhyme so we bought rhyme books instead and we started just writing in my nice. rhyme books so it kind of was like uh i always remember that day for various reasons 
but it's like a, it's it's kind of centered around obvious tragedy but also like my hip my love of hip-hop that's crazy so like you got into like rhyming like a lot later because like yeah that was like 2000s 2001 yeah i was in high school so i was about we were we were already dabbling but we yeah. went and we bought matching books because we yeah. were now going to be like a crew yeah, yeah like he had his color i had my color but it was the same style book and we were the only guys who could like look in each other's books like here you can read it or you could read it that was it, was it like those books that had like the diamond shape at the front like the <laughs> books and- like the, the cool i don't know the, i always whenever i think of people show the rhyme books it's always that book the mm. it's got that black diamond on the front where you could write your name and it's got like this crazy design like everyone has the same one yeah i, w- I wish it was that cool it was more like journals <laughs> they were more like hardcover <laughs> oh, sort okay. of you would write in but they were they were a little bit more like if i'm gonna write in this book it's gonna stay in this book like this isn't this is gonna be my permanent rhyme sort of thing had, like the lock and key and stuff yeah not, not no lock and key but it should have it was that was the only thing missing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so no it's it's it was one of those um art forms like it's a very misunderstood art form because of uh, of the obvious like violence connected to certain rap music but it is something that's also very uniting and it allows you to get a lot of things out of you without resorting to violence. If you're really listening and, and paying attention to what like the culture is really built around, like b-boying in and of itself was the way people were settling street beef. It's like, you got your dance crew, we got our dance crew, we're going to have a, a showdown instead of going in the streets and taking each other out. Yeah, b-boying was very, really uniting. I mean, it was a language. So yeah, yeah. It was a common language that like, all b-boys understood right so you know you could you can go and meet with someone all the way in japan and you guys just have this commonality of like just this language mm-hmm. and then that's all you needed to understand that there's like a trust there you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. well, so many people like you know during peak like b-boy years would come to just stay at my spot like stay at my parents place right you know without me even thinking home oh, no, though like i don't know what these who these guys are I don't know if they're going to like, you know, these who these strangers are and whatnot. I don't know what they're going to do to my house. And sure. Time. Never any thought of that during those years. Maybe I was younger. So like I didn't have that, yeah. that fear. But there was always that commonality that like we are there just to, to dance. You know what I mean? Like there's no other there's a respect. There's a respect to that. There's a respect to that. We just want to go and dance. So like you stay over my spot. I know like you're good for it. And it's crazy to think that because nowadays I'd never just let anybody <laughs> my my house and just sleep there. You know what I mean? Like I'm like it's someone that you have you've only met. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's that happened a lot during like that time, and I mean, I can't believe my parents let let allowed that, but they probably didn't know that these guys are just some dudes that we just met. Um, but but. Yeah, that's what it was like. It was really universal in that way where we spoke a common language and the, that's where the trust was, was just like that. We're all just interested in this one thing. It's kind yeah. of the same as like comics as well. It's true. It, it's it's so funny how, and I think that's why like for me when when I podcast, it's an opportunity to talk with people. It's not about like-minded people, but it's about liking, understanding why we like the same stuff. And I think we should talk about that more instead yeah. of, always disagreeing with stuff ah, I'm not, I'm not on that side it's like what do you like i bet you we got so much in common if you just tell me like what's your favorite album you oh, know, yeah. what, what's your favorite comic book because there's it's so much more fun to do that so like even with with like you said with b-boying and having that common language and being able to there's a piece it's like you get it i get it we got yeah. this respect even when i would when I would listen to music being yeah. more of like uh, paying attention to all the lyrics and the the styles and the cadences, all the little intricacies of emceeing. When you find a like-minded person in the sense of like, I heard that too. It, you're not crazy. I appreciated that pronunciation as well. You're like, yeah. oh, I got, I got kinship yeah. because you're, you're, it's, it's nerdy, but that's the whole thing with comics, right? Like we're nerds. We're paying attention to the little details. Yeah, man. Like it's a, uh comics hip-hop all that it's it's i i know like um another artist like amazing artist sanford green one of my my really good friends in the comic industry 
um that's how we like you know became like good friends it's just through that commonality of hip-hop it's like oh you like madlib okay we could be friends you know what i mean like you're a dilla fan we could be friends <laughs> yeah um, yeah it's cool that way yeah it's uh i often get the tag of being like a backpack rapper mm-hmm. but i'm i'm a i'm an everything i love it all okay, i haven't so i haven't your, kept what's your favorite like backpack <laughs> like backpack. uh pre ruckus like oh i see pre ruckus that's hard there, i know i know so much about hip hop and then admittedly so much i don't know and that's what i love because like there's times where i can listen to an album from 93 that i should have known and listened to but it's like it's new to me now and i can still appreciate like why it's wicked i got to i got onto tribe late i got to give credit to my wife for getting me into tribe because i was oh, praise your wife man yeah. yeah absolutely all the credit to her cuz it was what was the album low end theory oh low end theory yeah mm. she she had a a, t- a a cd of it i was i was hating on it because it was the the style of rapping was so much more a little more basic than what i had now in my headphones i'm listening to eminem and nas still matic yeah, yeah nas is rapping backwards and you know q-tip I love the song now, but when I'm hearing back in the days when I was a teenager, I'm like, this is basic. Like, this isn't complicated. I didn't miss anything. I didn't make me have to rewind until I appreciated more of the art of emceeing, right? It isn't just the punchline. It isn't just the double entendre or whatever. It's what he didn't say, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, my wife brought me on to Tribe. I'm I'm a late bloomer to certain hip hop, but sorry, go back to your question. My favorite backpack album Let's take, how about stakes is high stakes is high is that a good one does that count yeah i guess i, I, I guess it's a back i mean it was during that era but what well, what are you thinking what, what came, comes to your mind i don't know man like that whole backpack like the name backpack always felt weird I, even though i was rocking like backpacks because that's what b-boys used to do like back in the days and like i, I always had one with all i carried was cds and batteries <laughs> yeah and, like the peak b-boy era was just like yeah, man, we just had like all our gear in there and whatnot. Yeah. And then we're also rocking to like Black Star. So, like, Black Star was probably like that era for me. Um, yeah, I would have said Black so Star. Yeah. I would have said Black Star. I got their their vinyl hanging on my wall. I'm a huge Most Def fan. I love Most Def. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I love that era. I love every, all the eras, but I, I can remember that era was like kind of like Napster times too. So. Yeah. Getting a lot of like you know the excitement of getting like tracks just off Napster. Like we were trying to get unreleased stuff. Like yeah. oh, I don't. There's no place to buy this now. I got a copy of like Biggie Party and bullshit. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that, right remix, man. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's true. Um. Okay, the classic question we got to ask. Got to mm. ask. Top five. Top five MCs. Who are your guys? Oh shit. Oh man. <laughs> Well, Nas for sure. Yeah. Nas, uh, me too. Top five MCs? That's hard, bro. I know. I know. But your favorite. Your favorite. No one's feelings will be hurt. No one else has to agree. Mine Nas. is real. Yeah. Yay. Nice. Mm. I respect that. Yeah, and there's so many. Nas, uh, yay. shoot i'm like i'm drawing blanks man like i'm sorry i put you on the spot for that one but yeah. i feel like everyone's well, got to tell you five. some albums tell me your albums that's that's let's do it let's Ilmatic. go that way Illmatic for sure infamous nice huh. sitting, on, sitting on chrome is from from master ace, master ace. nice uh nice. master ace is nice not enough people know him I'm drawing blanks again man Oh, I, no. these, these, Midnight Marauders. Fuck, you're right. <laughs> How can I forget, man? I'm listening. I'm listening. Midnight to you, Marauders. Right? We were talking about it all the whole time. Um, and uh, only built for Cuban links. Nice. Yeah, you can't go wrong. I mean, just the beats so on that alone. Man. There's like Gangstar's Hard to Earn. Yeah. Um. Shit. You know what? Let me like scrap that. I gotta put Hard to Earn in there, and I gotta put 93 to Infinity. Nice. And, uh, that's another album that i got on to later 93 to infinity yeah and i love i love listening to albums like that where you realize like oh that's where that line is from 
like salute yes yeah that's cool eh? like i like that and and some for me i i never look at a person do because i'm a big jay-z fan Mm. and people hate on him because he you know uses lines from here or there but for me i'm just like i think it's cool that this you know gangster hustler rapper is making a reference to souls of of mischief 93 where like when he goes a red eye jedi i'm like yo that's dope it means he's listening to like easter eggs for like comic books you know that's what i I think a lot too. And I think sometimes it, it it sometimes would put me onto an artist that yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have ever known, you know, like I didn't realize just how much Rakim has been quoted mm-hmm. from everybody. And it just makes me go back. I'm like, OK, you know what? I'm going to listen to the, this older music with a, a level of respect because the guys who I rate and put yeah. up on a pedestal. They're they're nothing without him. So you know, let me check the and, and it would it would that sort of homage and respect would make me respect another person. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, it's cool. Like you could just everything's connected to you know what I mean. Like Nas comes from Rakim, and so you could cool see like, you could kind of like connect the dots to like who the originators are and how everyone kind of evolved from that. And it's 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 really cool to like look at it that, like look at history that way, right? Right, right. Okay, so I had mentioned before. In the Omniverse Comics Guide, guys, you're our number one favorite comic book cover artist. Hands down. We oh. love your stuff. So who are your favorite? I got two questions for you. We're gonna do a two-parter if you're if you're cool with it. So my first one is who are who's Mike Del Mundo's favorite comic book cover artist that inspired you? And what are your favorite hip hop hip hop album covers? Oh man, I, I know, know it's a lot. I know it's a lot, but let's go with the, co- the like comic name book. like artists like right now like um that are killing it right now that like like is crazy um uh Deco Jeff Deco um Scott Young's always killing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh Chris Bocklo is like my all time like. If I go to a comic shop and I see his book, it's always fresh eyes for me. It's like, so I'll always cop it. Like, for some reason, like, Chris Bockle's artwork is always fresh. Like, it's just fresh. Like, it's it's kind of timeless. And, like, it never gets old. So, Chris Bockle for sure. And he's always super inspiring. Like, I can lo- open up a Chris Bockle book and, like, get, you know, get me motivated again. Get me inspired to draw like it's just great something about his art is like just super super uh like the only way i could define is like super fresh like it's like a breath of fresh air all the time yeah Um, yeah i i think your work has a similar effect i think project to project a lot lot of my work comes from his like just even like the way he draws people like i obviously like i've kind of like evolved from it but like i learned a lot from him from like his poses to like faces uh, even colors so yeah and chris bocklo is like a god uh, high praise from you uh cool. cover artists right now yeah um and then you got the tino tedesco that guy's always awesome there's something about it that's crazy i love like you know paulo rivera um i know like i keep i, I know i'm gonna come up with other names no, it, it's it's interesting to hear the ones that pop up in our heads sometimes first. Um, but like I, I I went through a lot of eras of like just learning from artists and stuff and like and always going back to see like what you know what made me inspired by them. But there's also that era of like um, and I still love Humberto Ramos. Um, you know, he changed the game with like his wow. art. And all the guys like Francisco Herrera and Carlos Meglia, like those guys inspired me. Then you have the Joe Mads. Mm-hmm. Like at a start, it's like for me, it all started from like, you know, the image guys for sure. Um, Will Spertasho has got to be, and Wilson Rob has got to be like my first biggest inspirations as well. And Will's for sure, because, you know, like when I discovered him on like Uncanny X Men, and X Factor, and I was like all in. Those were like my biggest books. Um, like I loved X Factor and the things that he was doing there. 
and then to discover that he's filipino right even like perfect because i just didn't even know that like there was filipinos in the industry at the time as a as a kid so so interesting huge inspiration man and you know. No, that's great. No, I, it makes sense. And you, I can see all the people that you're mentioning. I can see why they're inspirations for you and why they would be uh, reasons for you to want to pick up your pen and, and what comes out of it. It's like, OK, yeah, I could see you. You kind of fit into the mold of that group of artists. It's the same feeling you get. You you can expect to be in a strange world, but you're f f for some reason comfortable because they're drawing it and you want to see more. There's definitely like if you kind of look at if you look close enough, you're going to see something out of all those guys in within right. my work. Right. Right. That's sure. really cool. Um, like, and then you have like the, like Rockwell for shit, like Rockwell and Leon Decker for like the painted stuff. Um, James Jean for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Lee. I can't forget Jim Lee and Todd and uh, Jay Lee. Yeah, man, Jay I keep going, man. No, that's okay. But it's, it's, I like hearing the different people that are inspiring you because like I said, you see the amalgamation of it within that artist afterwards and, and it's your own thing. And people will be like, well, who did you, how did you get your style? And it's just like, all of these people inspire you and you just become your own thing. You um, Man, favorite hip hop album covers. Do you have, not, they don't uh, have your favorite album. Right but... to the far side. Is okay. My top. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that one's sick. I have it framed, actually. Um, the CD version. <laughs> one sec. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. So I framed this, man, because it's just like, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah, so remember how, like, the, the, uh, the album, like, would fold out and they had those fold outs? Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Poster. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, I'm just gonna fold this out. This is just like the artwork is just so sick. That's I. I mean, I, it sounds like you, you were that. Sometimes when we think back to the the good old days of how our albums were, but like the, even the packaging was special. You know, it's not the same as when you just download an album and there's the album image with the track list. Like getting that album and unfolding that book and reading the credits was like part of the whole experience. You know? Oh yeah, I know, man. It uh, felt so good. And you like the, the smell of the ink when you flip the pages. Like, and it's like, yeah, it's a new album. It's so yeah, exciting. Used to, we used to, me and my cousin used to actually, we'd look, go through, you know, the, the, the sample. Like they would say that it contains a sample of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How to look find them a up. sample. <laughs> How do you look it up? How do you even look it up? There was no internet, right? So you'd have to actually like, because like my, my brother, he's like, he's a hip hop producer. And he like. Nice. He, um, so we would go to like, you know, record shops and, and try to find the samples. That's like yeah. the really only way, or like, you'd like, you know, we had like DJ friends that would, be, that would be digging for like, you know, the old soul samples and stuff like that too. So that was the only way, like you couldn't go on YouTube and be like, yo, I'm going to look up Curtis Mayfield or some shit. Yeah. But back then it was kind of cool. Cause it's like, when you actually found it, it was special, right? Like it, it was, was. Very special and you, you know, you take all of it but yeah with the album covers it was like i remember we used to like we used to flip them over and then put it back into the cd or the cassette so we'd flip over the album like remember you'd like open the album covers and then inside there'd be more photos so we'd yeah. flip over flip them over so that the photos would be the album cover like we oh i see you would flip them around so it was like the yeah, staples on the around. opposite side yeah 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 that, man. like we were just we were just these kids that would experience the whole thing right and i guess we didn't have youtube or anything like that so we just <laughs> we do stuff to our album covers and... it was the only way to customize it no i feel you yeah Sometimes yeah i guess I was... that's like pre-customizing like it's like just it's giving your own flavor yeah. yeah like who else is going to do this this is our that's the thing that was about hip-hop it was what are you coming with that's going to be our language but unique right yeah yeah like i remember my cousin we'd be doing he's like yeah this this is what i do like i all my co all my album cards are different they're all flipped over and i'm like well i want to do that too you know <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the same as like back in the days it would be like the nautica jackets and a tom Beale. you like we would like just cut out like the the tags yeah, and yeah. sold them back on to like 
blank hats or you know what i mean that weren't nautical or whatever we just do it man like and we'd figure it out like use like you know your grandma's sewing machine and stuff but i think that that generation it forced you to be creative i my my friend adam chapman made, made the statement of like the scarcity of what's available to you makes you appreciate what's there so much more right so if like if you got albums you it's like bring going bringing back to the beginning of this conversation it's like if you're at november 9th 93 and you got 20 bucks because albums were still expensive in the 90s yeah you're still going to be spending a good chunk of your money so if you had the option to pick one that's all you could do now you download both albums but back then there was two classic hip-hop albums that were game-changing and you could pick one and you yeah. didn't know what Wu Tang Clan was going to be, you know. That was like getting Walking Dead number one. Well, Two I remember. Uh, I remember. I think it only happened. I guess it happened a couple times, but I had the paper route, right? So you get like eight yeah, bucks yeah. for the whole month. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Bucks, and like I would literally spend it. Like there was a point where, like, I was like, I'm not buying comics no more. I'm just going to spend everything on maybe it either <laughs> be like one pair of shoe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or, like four cds right you know? right and uh i remember going into hmv and having to pick between black moons and to the stage <laughs> and wu-tang 36 chambers and i didn't know anything about wu-tang at the time like i yeah, just yeah. it was just in the hip-hop section and i saw the album cover and it frightened me for some reason i was like <laughs> there's no faces i don't know what this is this is some heavy metal shit you know what i mean so like i bought into the stage and i I'm glad I did because I, I mean I I went back and got 36 chambers later. Yeah. And to the stage was like, you know, that was I'm glad I was like, I was kind of I don't know, maybe if I bought Wu Tang, I would know nothing about Black Moon. You know what I mean? I so feel you. I yeah. feel you. You couldn't so avoid Wu Tang. There's only so long that you could go without having to encounter them. Just because I mean that first slew of everybody's solo albums. Yeah. Everyone was a classic. Yeah, and then like they remember when they had the BMG music like order form and <laughs> like every album was there every album You're oh man just get it all there man and then I, I remember they'd be like you get 10 free cds yeah you gotta buy two free cds you gotta buy two and then you could like totally just like cut your your order off that like something like there was just some scam where we could just do it and just like that's it we just cut our orders they're just yeah. trying to get us i remember there was it was BMG and Virgin, I think Virgin was doing it, or Columbia House. Columbia House. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. I I subscribed to that when my mom remarried. My stepdad was like, "I'm like, can we get these?" He's like, "Okay." He was real <laughs> cool about it. And I got one time. I was waiting for months, man. I thought they were never gonna come, and then they finally showed up in the mail one day after school. And I got like six albums. One of them was All Eyes on Me from Tupac. Yeah. It was like so dope because it was some of them were classic albums. I think it got uh, some Raekwon was in there, something from Wu Tang. I don't remember. It might have been Takal, but like from Thirty Six Chambers, you got Only Built for Cuban Links and Liquid Swords. Oh, yeah, like Liquid Swords is just so so dope. That whole time, every and and to me, they're all Wu Tang I albums. About that album, so yeah, I will put that in my top. Whatever's like top ten for sure. That's Dennis Cowan, right? He did the, the album yeah, art for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's legit. Like, they got, like, Dennis Cowan, and then who else they got? Sienkiewicz? Yeah, I think so. A lot of artists, man, to, like, do Wu-Tang albums. Pretty sick. Chris Bocklow did um, The Ghost Face, Method Man. Wu Massacre? Yeah, Wu Massacre. Raekwon Collab. Did he do I, all the covers? Or yeah. it was like a joint one, right? It was like one shot. Because because they're comic book fans. So Method Man's a huge... It was like one shot. I got the record and like inside there's even more art pieces and stuff like that. So Yeah, that's dope. If you could yeah. do... Uh, if there's a hip hop artist, who would you want to do their album for? Do you have one? Would you want to do a Nas one? Oh, yeah. I'd love yeah, to see you do Nas. Sure. I would... Yeah, I'd definitely do like a Nas album. I always wanted to do... Um, uh, so, like it's still i maybe i'll do it but um remember that 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 uh song i gave you power yeah yeah i want to do like a a sequential version of that man like illustrated version <laughs> like it's because it's so like you could see the pictures oh like, yeah telling the story so i'm just like 
I already see the pictures and I'm like, man, I should just do like a, like a short story kind of sequential of that. You know how you it's know been how... a to do it's just the time, but oh, yeah. dude, I mean, if we put it out there, this is going to be on the internet. People are going to want that from you. Not like, I don't know who's going to hear this, but you definitely got to do that. You'd be perfect for like it. That and and like, um, Elzai's like talking in my sleep. Like I was like, oh man, I could visually kill this. Like, oh, yeah, really cool. Yeah, that would be an incredible collection, actually. If you got into doing like songs and turn them into a graphic novel of some kind, like I gave you power, it would just be Nas's lyrics to telling yeah. the whole story with the picture. That'd be incredible, man. Damn. Um, dude, I could talk to you forever about this stuff. Uh. Yeah, we could keep going. Let's we could, we could keep we could keep going. All right, all right. Um, you're a Dilla fan, you said, right? Yeah. Greatest producer of all time. Mm -hmm. It's pretty inarguable, right? I mean, I I got onto him again more because of Common. I'm a big Common fan, and yeah. I love the B album because yeah. I'm a big. I was a big Kane West fan when I when we all thought his name was Kane West. I was <laughs> reading the credits, and yeah. I just loved his music. So when he was gonna do the Kanye out, uh, sorry, the the Common album. I knew it was going to be fire, but then the best beats were Dilla's. Were they? Uh, I, I it's your that. world. It's your world. I love that beat and love. It's a good beat, Ben, but that's not my favorite beat on that album. But, Which yeah. was your favorite beat? This is the B album? This is the B album. Um, Go for sure. Go is good. Go is um, good. Man, that album was really Some, good. Faithful. Faithful is great. Faithful is awesome. And then that first track, Oh, the the B intro with the with the B bass. Intro, yeah, that's great. Like, don't get me wrong, Kanye's Kanye. Yeah, where does he rank amongst producers? Because I think you know today he's yeah, such for a sure. like he's definitely on the top for sure. Yeah. I put him top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dilla Dilla is one of those guys. The more you, the more and more and more you discover, the more you realize just what an impact he had. Like I didn't realize how how influential he was to to tribe. Again reading the credits on certain albums because there, there was that collective the uma right which was him yeah, it was pretty much just him i think like it I was feel too. Like, it's it was just him and q-tip from quest like, love right you know, when the uma first came out like and they were talking about it during beats rhymes in life i guess that was like like the talk about this uma thing that q-tip was doing and then you realize that like there it's all dilla beats so feels like it it was like, yeah, I don't know. That's what it seemed like. Like, Beats are Rhymes of Life is all Dilla beats. And then The Love Moon was literally all Dilla. And then um, uh, Amplified was all Dilla, too, I think. It was, Maybe. right? Not not all Dilla, but yeah, a lot of it was. Yeah. Yeah, Q-Tip Q as well. Like, I, I, um, what got me into hip hop was actually Puff Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, it was the 97. Everything was happening. I was in grade seven during that time. So it was starting to really become the main thing. On hey, wait, you're grade seven, 97? Yeah, I'm so an 84. You're a lot younger than me then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much that younger? Because you, you don't look your age either. You're grade, grade 11. 11. Okay. Uh, 97, which is crazy because even that gap, like that was that like a four years? Four year four gap. Years. Four year gap. Yeah. That's like, that's like a long gap in like hip hop like generations it like, is it is so I, yeah so I, like yeah if you say you're into puff daddy like that was like your first thing then you can kind of date it back to yeah, yeah. that's why i, I say was, you're like, you definitely got you're a lot younger than me for sure yeah but but see i think being a part of that 90s era mm -hmm. if you were listening to hip-hop as, as a full scope thing even though i started off with you know like no way out songs on those albums, there's features. You've got yeah. a lot of Biggie songs. You've got The Locks. You've got Busta. You got Jay Z. You yeah. know, who are all these guys? And then you listen to like, I don't know if you ever listened to Jermaine Dupri album. I like Jermaine Dupri as a kid, and he had just features. So before you know it, you've listened to like fifty rappers. And then you just and keep going back, and you like see what. It's like comic of books, right? It's like this character shows up in this guy's book. Well, now I want to read that guy's book. I actually like Thor better than you know Iron Man. Yeah. You know, that's what happens with hip hop too. So I never hate on, you know, commercial hip hop that gets somebody into it. It's kind of like somebody reading Marvel or DC and mm -hmm. then they eventually they're going to get to that image book. So yeah, I remember that. I mean, like it was a big thing back then where it was like the Jiggy era and then like, you know, if you're listening the B -boys. to B-Boys. 
Yeah, so I remember I'd like, yeah, I'd definitely be listening to like Mason Puff and like Harlem World and stuff. But I'd be doing that like on the low, like you right. Know, you don't want no one to know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because you can kind of see now how the genius of like, like, like Puffy, like just getting like super popular albums and making bangers out of them, like all about the Benjamins. Like the Benjamins is just like when you think about it, it's like damn, that thing rocks. Like um and he just did what he felt like he wanted to do whether or not like it was like frowned upon or whatnot yeah i'm i'm one of the i'm a mace apologist i'm one of those guys who says mace was a really really good mc and he he like you said i did it for the money right i, I yeah. switched my style for the money but when you really listen to him and, and like the songwriting aspect of it even though it's like it seems real basic for what you could have had at the time there's a style to it that you can see in Kanye. You can see it in even like a Drake. Like oh, yeah, a, yeah. And it, it and he flips it so nice too. You're flip, like, yeah, it's so smooth, man. Yeah. Take away the shiny suit. It's so nice. Um, <laughs> did you would you have preferred the locks on Bad Boy or on Rough Riders? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I have an answer for that. It, I think it's just it is it is what it is. Just the locks. Yeah, just the locks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you watch any of the verses by chance? Have you tuned into those when they were doing them? Oh yeah, like just definitely something to watch during the pandemic for sure. Yeah, I can't believe how big they got. But when when the locks and Dipset went at it, like yeah, that that, that brought that's... me back to the glory days for yeah. me. Yeah, for sure. That was that. You're a Jada fan for sure. Then. Like, yeah, I love Jada. Really? I liked Cam too, but I I don't. Looking back, I'm like, uh, what I used to like about Cameron, not so much now. It didn't age well for me. Okay. But Jada did. Jada aged well for me. Yeah, they're both dope. I mean, it's different eras though. Like Rough Riders was killing it at a certain point, and then I remember being at the clubs and like listening to all the Dipset stuff. You know what I mean? Like that's what was like banging in like in the clubs. Yeah. Um, Oh, they were they were definitely huge. I mean, those songs, yeah. we were all bopping to them. Yeah. Right? That dipset anthem, we were all at school just like oh, leaning. Man, yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> right? We we like that shit. <laughs> yeah, man. No, it was good times. Um crazy for a kid like my kids now, if they ever got into hip hop, you know. Um like and for the, like, it's crazy that they can go back into so many different eras. And, like they're right. just first in so much discovery of like this music, because like when we're, we're coming up, it was night. It was like early nineties. Well, when I was coming up, it was like early nineties. Mm -hmm. So I could just dip back, like, you know, at the most 10 years of like music, you know, and like discover the stuff from back in the days. But now kids can go like 40 years, man. Like, Isn't that crazy, though, when you think like life after death or Illmatic is going to be 30 years old? Yeah. Holy. And it so still rocks. Many, so many changes of music. Like we're talking like the Jagiera, and then you have like the Backpack era, what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and then there's like the, even the older era, like, like Wild Style Days. Yeah. They're just like the music changes. There's so many music and style changes throughout these years that like i'm just like man there's just so much stuff like a kid could be immersed in now i have right? i'm having a hard time keeping up with it today but i'm yeah. really happy like you said that there's 40 years worth of music to enjoy and history to it now which yeah. is nice yeah i guess 40 years what is it like 78 they say hip-hop well 73 yeah. something like that i don't know i get the number wrong but yeah it's nice that I'm not trying to keep up with some of the stuff today because I feel it's a different, it's like it's a different genre of music to an extent. Like mm -hmm. to compare A Boogie with the hoodie to Jizza, it's, it's not the same music they're making. You know what I mean? You can't compare them as MCs. It's not the same thing they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a vibe. Like they're just, things just evolve. I mean, yeah. it might not Do evolve to like lyrical craziness, but. Just gotta embrace it somewhere or another they'll find some greatness in it you know being from toronto right mm -hmm. speaking of like embracing it what are your thoughts on drake because a lot of people give him hate and flack and they say he sucks i'm not i don't feel that way i feel like a certain level of pride 
for him being I mean, if, if, if you're a music lover and you like know music really well like then you say drake's sick you know like right i mean, i think he makes i think great he, music he makes, he makes really good music that's um, what i mean and it's it, like yeah. all the accolades the, the position he's got whatever credit he gets it's hard work like at this point in time it's not a fluke it's not a couple hits so he's yeah, really no, he makes good music um, yeah i mean and he's also a music lover and all that so yeah you i don't get, know man, you, if there's someone to hating on drake i don't know if they're hating about because you know a lot of people it's almost like you being from here it's like you you almost have to I have friends tell me where they'll be like, you know, when you say you like Drake, people are like, why? Why do you like him? He's like this. He's like that. It's like your own t town no, always gives you a harder time. Yeah. That no, I agree. To him. Like if, yeah, it's like they, they're probably just not listening to him. <laughs> there needs to be a Del, Mundo, a Del Mundo Drake album cover just for the Toronto connection. <laughs> that My brother be... did a, a, um, some music for Drake. Oh, yeah? He yeah. produced tracks for him? What's back, your brother's back, back in the like way back before before so far gone and all that um, oh wow that's awesome yeah he did this track called doing his thing very cool you gotta say you gotta say is it on uh what platform would it be on if i wanted to check it out youtube check youtube it out. what's it called again doing his thing doing his thing okay so early early drake before he was yeah. with wayne yeah it's crazy man like we i remember like going to like I mean, being from Toronto, right? You get you get to see all that, like him opening up for for most deaf and like people booing him and stuff like that. And like they're like, who, who this, who's this guy? And then now you're seeing, you're like, whoa, you know what I mean? Now he's up here and all this. Yeah, it's crazy. It's great. I, I like being from from our city. When you see guys like Drake or you know guys such as yourself that are doing it big for real. And it's like, yeah, they're just around the corner. Our city's our city's doing stuff. It's yeah. always, I don't know. I, I like cheering the hometown at the end of the day. I'm a homer, so it's good. Yeah, man. Like it's, it's it's a lot of Canadian pride, right? And like yeah. the fact that Todd McFarlane is a Canadian as well was a hey. big I mean, like full circle. We like those are back to him. It's just like he's you know, he's like he carried the torch for the, he the did. Canucks, man. So it's true. That was a big inspiration. So we had Wills as a, you know, as a an awesome Filipino artist. Yeah. And then Todd as like, you know, and a Canadian artist. So that's was, great. <laughs> you know what, dude? Bring it back to the beginning. I'm really happy for you. And just seeing um when people I always say this to myself to remind myself, like if you want cool things to happen, you just gotta try. And you you did all the things you enjoyed doing, b-boying doing your artwork and always improving upon it. And like you said, everything feels like a dream sometimes. So yeah. you know what? Like salute to you. That makes me so happy to see that people doing the things they like doing, it pays off. Yeah. I mean, anybody that's trying to get into this comic world. Yeah. It's just hard work. You just got to work hard and uh, things somehow the planets align and, and it'll, it'll come your way. Just put in the work. You know, everyone like everybody in the in this industry works really hard. You know, yeah. a, a crazy amount of hours that you put into this. So anyone that's existing in this industry right now is working their ass off. So that's all it is, man. It's hard work. I mean, there's definitely talent in there, but you you know, it, we're just we're not born with it. Just gotta gotta put you it work at it. Down. Yeah. That 10,000 hours, as they say, right? It'll all come together. No, that's good. It's it's nice to talk to like people who are inspirational. Like you're you're inspired to create what you create, but then it inspires everybody else. So it's always, always nice. Thank you so much for your time, dude. I'm gonna let you go. I hope you you come back on soon. I love talking to you just about hip hop. I'll give you like yeah. subjects if you want. We could just go at it. It'll be great. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for having me. It's, it was fun. It was really when, fun. When's the next issue of Spawn coming out? Just so everyone could know. Um, I'm, I'm done. Like I just did the two big oh, oversized issues. So it was like, a, it was supposed to be a four issue thing and we compressed it to like two issues per book. So that's, that's so what it like is. A one shot, like a, a nice Got you. mini book. And I, and, um, so what's up next for me is just three worlds, three moons, like the big, the big, uh, world building, um, thing that we're doing there. Um, three worlds, three moons.com. That's with 
Mike Huddleston and Jonathan Hickman. Nice. And, and we're just, we're making some great stuff. That's, that's what I'm focused on right now. That's fantastic. When, when all of that is coming together and coming out, we definitely need to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, check it out right now. Like it's like, it's been out for about a year and a half. You see, oh you shit. I didn't even realize that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's been out for a year and a half. It's like a subscriber base thing. Got you. Got I'm you. Okay. on, um, a, a story. Like there's a lot of stories coming out in the woodworks and okay. I'm, working, I'm working on one with Jonathan right now. And it's, it's, we're talking like fantasy. We're talking about sci-fi. We're talking about all that stuff. And it, it's, it's, can't wait for you guys to see it it's just it's still working on it um, so it's going to be it's a subscription-based thing will it ever be in print at some point in time or are you keeping it in this style for, yeah, now? for sure eventually everything comes in print because we're all just so we're you know we're like big print guys like we grew up in in that era of you know print matter i mean right. i still think it matters so yeah i think so sure. too I, I do these things to see my work in print and not digitally even though i work digital which is weird but right. um, for sure, like that's, you know, that's what I get excited about this to kind of imagine these things being in paper, being in hardcover, stuff like that. So it's tactile, it's real. There's something that once you have that in your hand, no one can take that away from you if you keep it right. Yeah, you can smell it. You can feel it, <laughs> you know, like the nice matte paper, how like, um, you know, I always kind of imagine my work because because I work predominantly digital. It's, it's nice to kind of get it in print in like a matte feel kind of thing so like it kind of fades the color a bit and like makes it feel real so. yeah absolutely i i i have two huge bookshelves just stacked because people are like why don't you just buy digital it's like no this is i, I think com even comic book creators just they pre like you said they appreciate seeing it those page flip they want to be a part of that pantheon of creating something that's real right the way you yeah. guys experienced it so and, I'm, yeah books still exist these days right like my kids are still reading books which i'm glad so that they could be like i mean we're talking about like back in the days where we could just kind of open up a cd and read it and take yeah. it in spell and this and that and like not a lot of things you could do these days with that right because no. everything is so like you know netflix is digital you don't go to a blockbuster no more and, and pick out a video or that a was movie. part of the fun like that was the experience right so yeah you glad that, like, the movie. getting some of it of yeah. going to like a bookshop like chapters or and getting getting a book and still reading it and it's nice yeah. to see my kids doing that you know no it, i i agree when i see a kid or anybody these days reading a book i'm just like thank goodness we're still enjoying i mean i know there's a lot of practicality to being digital but it's not the same yeah, Even and, and the that's, progress, that's, right? Like, Flipping that page, it's like you feel page. you're getting it. You, you see how much you've done. It's encouraging. I don't know. It does something to your head. Because we're headed, like we're definitely headed into the the metaverse thing. So get ready. Um, uh, I'm not excited about stuff like that. That doesn't excite <laughs> me. I would rather see B boys than you know a digital B boy. I mean, but imagine like being able to put on like a like you know like your virtual reality headset. And being to able to see the B-Boys B-Boy, like you feel like you're there. I mean, it'll yeah, there, there's, there's the cool elements is, to like, it. I don't want to live in there, though. The problem would be is like if everyone could just sit down and watch this online, feeling like you're immersive and it's real, then no one's going to actually go to the jam, like the battle. Like it'll just be like two right. guys going off. That's so, right. But I mean, hey, man, we'll see how it goes. Like. Yeah, I think, again, going back to being like, oh, back in my day, I think part of the enjoyment of whatever the music we bought, whatever comics we bought, it was that ride on the bus with your friend. It was the anticipation of getting there. Like it created a moment. It created a story that you lived instead of now just like download. And by the time you yeah. get to work, it's like, did you listen to it? Did you hear that song? You're not. It's no longer that communal sort of like yeah. going to the gym to battle. No, that's the that's what matters for me. Yeah, like getting going through that just to get that one record. Like, you know, being from Markham, it was like, um, taking that bus, like three buses to get downtown, just to go to play the record, just to get that, just to get one record. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, man, it means a lot when you you get that one record, you cherish it, you listen oh, to man. it, you overdo it, and all that. Yeah. I used to skip school and go to BMV when it, the one that's on right in front of right in front of where the HMV used to be. So I'd spend my whole day. Oh yeah, man, I used to love that place. Yeah, and I would get old Source magazines because they had a whole magazine rack, and they would put them in like poly bagged. So old, old source magazines where I would pay attention, like, oh, that's the one where, you know, Nas got five mics. I got to get that one. And, you you know, read interviews. And I just had a bunch of old. So I had like five years straight of the source. And BMV had a lot to do with me getting those like, older issues. I don't even yeah. like, because like, there's like a big popularity now of like getting old, like, you know, a lot of, it's a collector's world now. So a lot of people are buying out a lot of like the source magazines, a lot of like the old hip hop stuff. Double XL. I remember, during, I remember that time during the BMV era where you'd go in there and I'd be like, I just passed by the Source magazine rack. Cause I'm yeah. like, eh, I just, you know, there's a, there a point where I just wanted to listen to the music. It was just experiencing the music and I wasn't like collecting it. I was like, I'd go to a concert. I didn't care for the shirt. I just wanted to see hear it. The performer, right, 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 right. And now I look back and I'm like, fuck, man, I should have, I should have bought all that stuff. Yeah, now, I had. Now that I have money, and that's one more <laughs> rebuying like, these things from my childhood and this and that. But so yeah, true. like I'm going back into my old source mags, my tattered source magazines. I'm like, shoot, I should. I had so many years worth, and I and I just I was cleaning out one day, and you have those moments where like, ah, I don't love this anymore, and I got rid of them all. Wow, yeah, that's it happens, and then you're just like, why did I do that? Because back in the days, it was just, we we lived off experiencing things. And yes. like, once we're done with it. We're done with it. Like, I, like my wife, like, I remember last year, she, she bought a novel and she read it. And then she's like, I'm done with it. Like, we were at a hotel and she's like, I'm just going to leave this for the cleaner. And I was like, why? Like, you paid for that. Just keep it. And she's like, why? I'm finished with it. Like, I'm done. And I'm like, I forgot how that's how we used to live was like once you're done with it like you know it wasn't like a collector's mentality no I, I mean for me I've always had that collector mentality because I was I just I wanted to refer back to things I like the idea of like having that library yeah, but yeah there are those times or even with my own comic books where I, people are like are you sure you want to give this to me and I'm like I'm done with it I've yeah. read it I enjoyed it Probably never read that again, but I think your kid will like it. So that's okay. Well, I kept my CDs. That's the only thing, but that's because I needed to listen to it, like re-listen to it. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. shoes, like, you know, if you had Jordans, you got rid of them after, you know? I know. And now you buy them again for like way more than what they were worth. So. is So, okay. My final question for you. One, I'm going to need you to plug your website again where you're doing the work. Can you shout it out one more time? Yeah, uh, check out um, uh, this new venture into Three Worlds, Three Moons. It's 3w3m.com. That's with me, Mike Huddleston, Jonathan Hickman, and we're just building like a re something crazy. We're, we're, we're building something really good. Um, and then check out uh, my website, I guess, if you want to look, look to see what else I've done, www.mikedunlando.com, or check out the shop store.mikedelmundo.com and you know, there's some fun stuff there like stickers and comic books signed comics and stuff like that so check I, gotta, out. I gotta get that galactus and the silver surfer whose world is this oh yeah put that on a hoodie that thing's so dope yeah, um my final question is uh, Nas said sway tim's on his feet make his cypher complete what <laughs> what shoes on mike del mundo's feet make his cypher complete what's the what are the kicks? like a new balance guy like You're a like new balance, balance guy? Yeah. Gotcha. I saw the Jordan hanging in the background there, so I thought maybe you had a... Yeah, those are like my only Jordans. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the only ones? Got the classics. The originals, right? Yeah, that's from like the Miles movie, so from that's the right. universe movie. So right. I, that's I right. need to get those. It's like, I was hype. I'm like, just... Um, but I don't know. I ne like grew up not having Jordans because they're just too expensive and like my parents and I just kind of stuck with it. And like, and especially being a b-boy, uh, I was more just like rocking like cross trainers and stuff. Like, so, you know, New Balances and like Adidas and um, what else? Uh, 
A6. A6. I was going to say A6. I was like, yeah, he's going to say it. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for your time. I got mad love for you, dude. All the best. And I hope you come back on the show sooner thank than you. later. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. Was- All right, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, make sure you rate and review the show. Omniverse Comics Guy podcast. Don't forget to follow Mike on all his different social media platforms as well as his websites where his work is being done. We'll be back soon. Everybody, take care.